Hey, I did a lot of book hunting last week, arguably too much book hunting, and I've accumulated a bit of a dragon's hoard of new books, new books to me. Uh, mostly sci-fi. I will start with a book that I actually ordered new off of Amazon. There is no anti-memetics division by Quantum, Q-N-T-M. I just stumbled upon this browsing around the people also bought section. Sounds wild. Sounds like a very cerebral psychological sci-fi horror about uh, an alien race that uses uh, uh, a psychic weapon called anti-memetics where if you even think about the anti-memetics, it kills you or something like that. Sounds really innovative. And there were a couple of one-star reviews saying that there was too much body horror in it. As you can tell from the shirt, I adore sci-fi body horror, and there's not that much of it in literary form or in film either. So I got that. I also got this from the used bookstore that I live down the street from, fortunately or unfortunately. Joe Abercrombie, A Little Hatred. I don't read a lot of fantasy, and I want to double check that hypothesis that fantasy isn't good. And I was watching a YouTube channel where a guy said that he was going to take work off, take a day off work to read the sequel of this when it comes out. It was so good. So it was 10 bucks and I had a lot of credit from flipping books at that used bookstore. So I picked it up, got this at another little used bookstore. Nor Crystal Tears by Alan Dean Foster. I've said it a couple times on the channel, but I'm an apologist for Foster. I like him. I think he is kind of uh, not a hack, but he's prolific, and the literary value of his work is is hit or miss. But he can turn a good tale, and uh, I've talked about Midworld, his book Midworld, before on the channel. I read half of this when I was a teenager, which I did a lot of, and um, really liked it, but didn't finish it because I got distracted by MySpace or something. Blood Music by Greg Bear. I've never actually read Greg Bear, but I'm accumulating a lot of his books. I got this for a dollar. Blood Music is supposed to be a great piece of sci-fi body horror about a guy who grows malignant um, creatures in his blood. Sounds good. Got this from the same spot. Keith Lommer's A Plague of Demons. Not supposed to be a great work, but it has a completely kick-ass cover. And the premise actually sounds cool. It's about a guy that gets kidnapped by aliens and forced to pilot a mech in this intergalactic war. Sounds promising, it was two and a half bucks. Was on the fence about this one because I feel like this might be one of the books that I never end up reading, but I just love the cover. Neuromancer by William Gibson for two and a half bucks. I almost didn't pick this up just because I don't really like the aesthetics of the paperback but I figured it was in pretty good shape. And this is one of those books that I haven't read, but I feel compelled to read because it's like obligatory reading for a sci-fi fan. Ray Bradbury's The Toynbee Convector, which is a collection of stories. One of my great sins as a sci-fi fan is having never really read that much Bradbury. I read The Illustrated Man when I was in middle school and I didn't read anything since. And it's not because I don't like Ray, no, I take it back. I read Fahrenheit 451, Illustrated Man. This was from a library book sale, so I think these were a dollar each. Same with this, P.D. James, The Children of Men. This is the same book that the movie was based on. The movie's great, and the book's supposed to be good as well. And I really like this kind of mass market paperback from this era. I think this was the late 80s. No, 92. Yeah, it's, I just really like reading these books. Different library book sale, different day. Player of Games, Ian M. Banks, allegedly the best or one of the best of the Culture Series novels, of which I have never read any. And this was a buck. Same sale. This was really interesting. Gladiator by Philip Wiley, which is apparently the book that Superman is based off of. And I read a couple of reviews that made it sound like Superman is just a blatant ripoff of this character. And this was written in 1930. And this is the kind of thing that really piques my curiosity. I'll probably end up actually reading this. I like kind of forgotten, neglected pieces of sci-fi. Some non-sci-fi books. I got uh, Newt Hampson's The Last Joy. Newt Hampson is one of my favorite authors, despite his politics. Also at that library book sale where I got the Bradberries, I 
was kind of peer pressured into getting getting this copy of Dubliners. I got to talking to this really nice lady who was a former English teacher and she asked me if I'd ever read it and I said no, I've read part of Portrait of the Artist but never Dubliners and she twisted my arm into getting it. Fair enough. Um, so Joyce is definitely someone I should have read more of, I think. Vox by Nicholas Baker. I got this at a Goodwill. This is an erotic novel from the 90s that I keep finding. There's always a copy of Vox somewhere in every Goodwill, and I've never read it. But it's short, and on paper it seems like the kind of thing that I would be into. So, And then yesterday I stopped off at a Goodwill bookstore just on a whim. I figured I wouldn't really find anything because I've been hitting it a lot in the past few weeks, but I figured I was bored. I wanted to go there just for the sake of going there. Maybe I would find something cool. I got a big, big stack of stuff. So I got another copy of Blind Sight by Peter Watts. Uh, I have a friend who's also a viewer who commented that she was at this self-same Goodwill bookstore and passed up on this before watching my video about it. So I picked this up for her. Wool by Hugh Howley, book I see talked about a lot. Actually, first time ever seeing it out in the wild. So I picked it up and it cost four bucks. I got a copy of Meg by Steve Alton just for sentimental purposes. It's not a good book, but I read it when I was, I think, 11 or 12 and adored it. And this is the book that the movie, The Meg, was based on. The book is better than the movie, which isn't a hard feat to pull off, but uh, just purely for sentimental reasons, I got it. It was a dollar and probably will never read this again, but it puts a smile on my face when I see that name. Got a copy of Hitchhiker's Guide, another one that I've never read. Not one that I particularly am excited to read. Two bucks, but I want to be wrong about it. I feel like the humor isn't gonna age that well, but who, you know, what do I know? I've never actually read any Douglas Adams. Marquis de Sade, Misfortunes Fortunes of Virtue, that's another name for Justine. You don't find Marquis de Sade in thrift stores all that much. Got volume two of Robert Silverberg's collected stories. I have volumes one and I think four and five. Silverberg is way underrated. I love every novel from him that I've read. I like most of the short stories that he's written. The first volume starts with a story about a man who travels forward in time and becomes trapped in the mind of a giant sentient lobster who's undergoing a spiritual pilgrimage with his community of lobsters on the deep sea floor. It's great. Um, let me find the name of that actually. Yeah, so here, here is volume one. So volume one, volume two. Uh, the name of the story is Home Faring and it's one of the best sci-fi stories that I've read. You might be able to find it somewhere online definitely worth seeking out. It's just great. Uh, Silverberg is just such a competent writer and um, gifted with prose as well. And then this was crazy. So, okay, so I'll just show it. I got this edition of Dune, the hardcover, the most desirable, really, edition of Dune. I've seen these in Moyd's videos and uh, I, I really wanted some, figured I'd never find them really. This was six bucks. Pristine condition. I don't think this was ever read. This is in like new condition. And I know the movie's coming out. I've only ever made it halfway through Dune. That's one of those books that I read only halfway when I was in my reading halfway period of my teenage years. So because this came to me, I feel now that I should probably follow up and read it next. I'm almost done with Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson, and I'm gonna be putting a review out of that. I wanted to take a break, read something a little bit shorter because it's about the same length, but might just have to leap into Dune. And then, then I found another one, Stranger in a Strange Land by Heinlein. Not a book I'm particularly excited to read, another classic that I I just keep kicking the can down the road on, just because I don't, I don't love Heinlein. Um, this was also six books, uh, six bucks. I want to read Moon is a Harsh Mistress because that's regarded as a hard sci-fi classic. This is more political. It's a novel about culture and libertarianism, as I understand it. But I do feel duty bound to read it. And I never have, and I've never owned a copy of it. And uh, this might carry me over the edge. 
And finally, finally, Neuromancer by William Gibson. And this definitely usurps this one. So this one is getting flipped for credit at the used bookstore by my place. This one is getting read. Another one, not to sound like a snob, which I probably do, but I tend not to love cyberpunk all that much, but another classic that needs to be read. And this one was also six bucks. At an absolute steal. Definitely scratched most of the itch, although the itch never fully gets scratched and I'm pretty choked for space on my bookshelves, but of course I'm going to keep buying books. I no longer feel bad about just accumulating massive piles of books, most of which or many of which I know that I'm not actually going to read because I'm 33 and it costs a dollar each and why not? And I like looking at them. It brings me joy. So I'm going to keep doing it. And not every week is this good, but this one was. So thanks for watching. The Red Mars review is coming very soon.